So let me chat about a few things. One, on our council agenda tomorrow, you'll see two uh, energy slash climate related items. One is a resolution to push our state to move beyond the 25% renewable portfolio to get to 100% by 2035 uh, and no later than 50% by 2030. So it is, and that resolution is accompanied by, and hopefully we will act on that resolution tomorrow. Um, there's an introduction of a resolution that basically says we are in a different place than we were a number of years ago when we established our objective to reduce our emissions by 80% by 2050. The world, the earth is changing far faster. It is a climate emergency. And so we need to confront that. We need to do everything we can here at the county level uh, to reduce our own emissions at a far faster pace. And so the two are really basically saying we have to do more faster. And obviously the state's role with respect to that is critical because if we get 100% renewable by 2035, obviously all our buildings consumptions are electricity and electricity that depends on coal obviously is not good electricity for our purposes. So if we can get to renewables at 100%, that goes a long way to getting to a 100% reduction in fossil fuels and carbon emissions, period. Um, the transportation sector is going to be uh, obviously a difficult uh, sector for us to attack, but one that hopefully Congress at some point in time will get involved with and help us achieve that objective as well. So there's some things that we can do at the county level. There are other things that the state can do. There are other things that the federal government can do. But the bottom line is we are in a climate emergency and we have to do things differently. And that's what these resolutions are all about. We also have on the agenda a recommendation, an introduction uh, to purchase what we are calling the Capital Crescent Civic Green in the middle of downtown Bethesda. It is an issue that I've been fighting for for about 10 years now uh, when developers had proposed turning that area into a Tokyo-style linear park. And uh, the community and I actually led an effort to say, no, that's not okay. We need to preserve this space as a public gathering space, as a green space to the extent possible. But again, hearkening back to the experience that people had of the Barnes and Noble area, that people just gathered. They hunger for places where community can come together. And it is, in my judgment, uh, an ideal spot for it. You may appreciate that Federal Realty owned a triangle in the midst of it and at one point in time had proposed a 14-story uh, complex right there in the middle of that area. And so it did need to be purchased. The purchase price strikes people as high, but the net to our county is going to be less than half of that when it's all said and done, part because we are going to get money from the state for using that as a staging area, and partly because we can sell, the park and planning can sell the unused FAR for a considerable chunk of change as well. So the expectation of uh, most of us is that we are talking about less than half of the cost that has been talked about is necessary for this to be a great public commons area. Tomorrow morning we changed our committee, uh, our council session in order to attend the Purple Line Corridor Community Development Agreement. I will be there with the county executive. Um, this is not a compact per se, but it is a statement uh, that we need to take seriously, which is that as our areas get redeveloped with the Purple Line, that we hope to invest in those communities. We hope to have workforce development in those communities. We hope to have affordable housing in those communities. We hope not to displace communities. We hope to assist communities. And that is the goal of our 
most of the people that are involved in this effort. Uh, the University of Maryland has played a key role in this, and um, so have many other uh, important members of our community, and it is a worthy objective. And I know that the county executive of Prince George's County will be there, the county executive of Montgomery County will be there, uh, the president of the University of Maryland will be there, and many of my colleagues and I will be there as well. So that's why we changed the, the schedule a bit. Um, also, tomorrow afternoon, we will be having an update on the Kerwin Commission. Uh, it is something that uh, I asked uh, Councilmember Rice to do for my colleagues and myself, given how important education funding is to our community, to understand exactly what is going on here, what is the risks, if any, to our county, and uh, how does he believe this will play out. So it's an opportunity for my colleagues and for the public to have a better understanding of what's going on in the Kerwin condition. I was also felt important to respond to our Secretary of Transportation, Pete Ron's observations about Metro funding. I have been somebody who has lavish praise on Secretary Ron because I feel like he has been a good partner to us in many, many ways. Um, on this issue, I find myself very disappointed. He is arguing that we don't need to get to dedicated funding for Metro now because the $500 million that has been projected to be needed for the next 10 years he thinks is not sound. There are few things that have been studied more carefully than this issue by more people. We do not need more time to understand the magnitude of what is necessary for Metro to have the resources it needs. This is a thin reed upon which to not move forward with dedicated funding. And we can have disagreements with respect to the governance issues. Okay? It is clear in the minds of many people that the board has been too parochial for too long and that we ought to seriously consider revisions. Neither of those ex are excuses. They really are just excuses for not stepping up and taking it to the final mile. The governor's own proposal of $125 million assumed that the need was, in fact, $500 million for the next four years. It was $125 from us, $125 from the District of Columbia, $125 from Virginia, and $125 from the federal government. That is the level of need that we should achieve and it is appropriate for us to have dedicated funding from the Maryland Transportation Trust Fund to do it, and we ought to be done with this piece. We have a chance, as I've discussed previously in Virginia, to make some positive steps forward given the elections there, and Maryland should not be the party that holds us back if we're able to make progress in Virginia. We do have our youth town hall meeting Wednesday night. Uh, and so I urge you to spread the word with respect to that so that all of our youth uh, will feel heard uh, and that we can learn from them the issues that are so important to them. Why don't I stop there and turn it over to you guys. Um, what are some concerns that um, some people might not be considering in terms of the metro budget? How you tell us that part of the reason he's asking for more money is all the problems of uh, mismanagement and deferred maintenance that are being covered from the campus margin. Yes, this issue has been studied for many, many months. It was studied by uh, by the Council of Governments. It was studied by our administrative officers. It was studied and studied to make sure that the internal work of Mr. Wiedenfeld and his people was confirmed by outside folks. So the need is unquestioned. We have basically funded this system as though it were a new system. It is now a 40-year-old system. It is falling apart. It needs 
this kind of dollars in order to get back to the state of good repair that we expect. Actually, the the world-class system that it once was and that we should not shy away from expecting in the future. So I, I really am so disappointed that the that Secretary Ron is using this as an excuse not to go forward because it's the thinnest read possible. Was this to be, I'm sorry, somebody else had a follow-up question. Um, was this to be expected given the amount of money that um, Maryland is giving to the Purple Line at the same time as the um, Metro? This is one of the concerns that were brought up in lawsuits. No. Okay. What about the performance of Metro when people look at this morning lines around the block um, because of the red line being suspended while they do work and um, people say this is a reason why I don't ride Metro. I can't depend on this thing. Um, so I understand there's sort of the chicken and the egg, but what do you say to those who say that's why I'm happy our governor is a roads guy and keeps on adding uh, you know, capacity to the roadways because look at what happens when you inv when you have transit. Uh, look at what happens when you don't invest in transit. So the notion that somehow we're going to change this storyline without investing is ridiculous. It does require major investment. We have not invested. We are the only community in America that doesn't have a dedicated source of funds for a major subway system. It's not serving us. So it is true people are frustrated, and it is also true that there is no single system more important to our region than Metro, no single system more important to Montgomery County than Metro. So it is true that we won't get everybody out of their cars, but if we don't have Metro, you think congestion is bad today? It will be OMG that much worse if we don't fix Metro and make the investment in it. And this is not a, just a, a Montgomery County, Prince George's County issue. This is the economy of the state of Maryland depends on investing in Metro. Can I follow up on a totally different subject? Yes. We just came from the um, combined uh, committee hearing on uh, efforts to deal with gang violence. We just had a horrific case detailed in the arrest of one uh, gang, suspected gang member. Um, upstairs there was uh, the words egregious and inexcusable were used about the um, HHS not go moving forward on something you gave them money to do. Can you talk about what happened? What went wrong? Yes, what went wrong is that our council supported a program called, I apologize, SAFE let me get it in front of me so that I say it correctly. It's the Safe Space Program. And we had appropriated the dollars necessary to begin that program. Now, what we also understand is that those dollars actually won't be spent in the first quarter because you have to hire people. But what happened in this instance was the f that quarter went by and then they started the hiring process. So we lost a quarter that we shouldn't have lost. And the secretary, I believe, was, the director was remorseful and took responsibility with respect to it. I don't know if that was ultimately her responsibility. She's a pretty good team player. But this is something that given the concerns of our community, the rightful concerns of our community, I, like many people who read that article, there should have been uh, viewer discretion advised all written on that article. It was so graphic and, and so horrific, as you said, that it just turns people's stomach. So our community must do everything it can to both suppress and prevent. I have said to you and others before that I depend on our chief of police and our state's attorney to tell us what they need. And I, for one, would give them whatever they feel they need. And at the same time, it's clear that you do need a holistic approach with respect to these issues. We had young people coming back into this country unaccompanied to be reunited with families that didn't know them, that don't know them. 
and sometimes are kicked out of the house because they have no familiarity with them. So it underscores how you can't have a single approach with respect to this, and which is why we create programs like the Safe Space Program, to create spaces where our youth can come and do things that might otherwise pull them in a different direction. I have a question. Do you think it's throwing more money at Metro, back to Metro? Um, this had so many problems um, that gets complaints. Do you think throwing more money at it will solve the problem? And if not, if we do give Metro more money, how do you, I guess, does the county have any way to kind of hold them accountable to make sure they do what they're supposed to do to fix Metro to help people in the county and of the state of Maryland with more money? Well, again, let me posit the, what happens if we don't, okay? If we allow this system to deteriorate any further, it will have an incredible impact on our quality of life and our economy. It cannot happen. Metro cannot fail. So we have, a, in my judgment, a very strong general manager who's doing everything that any one individual can do to pull together a culture that had been allowed to actually go south on us, okay? So we have a culture that went south. We have a system that was underinvested in. This is not rocket science. If we can't fix a metro system with the resources that are necessary, then, then something really is wrong, okay? This is a dollars and cents issue. This system, just like our red line does, as you know, our red line is like Lou Ray Caverns in places. Okay? We got water in the subway system. Water and electricity are not a good combination. It shorts out. It has smoke. And so now, for the first time, they're coming up with ways in which to combat that. And they're going to continue doing that. That costs money. So there is no choice here, in my judgment. And I think we have a team in place that can bring about success. But they need help. Back to Gang's question real quick. Um, there are so many programs in place. Do you think those programs are working? Well, we need to assess that, and we will be assessing that in the next budget, I am sure, because there's only going to be so much resources that we're going to be able to spend on anything. So at every point in time, we need to be assessing how our programs are working. I will say to you that I know that there are some programs, particularly the, the Department of Rec programs, that work very well. And they've got a new soccer program that uh, you know, brings kids together to do something they love and creates a very different environment for them to thrive. So I do feel like we have a handle on some of our programs. Can I say across the board every one of these programs is working? I can't. Have you heard anything new from police about the investigation into this, this brutal murder? Um, they said ten, as many as ten people may have been involved. It sounds like they have one person arrested, possibly fingered by a, uh, pointed to by a, another gang member who came to police to tell this story. Um, I mean, this, this body was found in September, it's now end of November going into December, there's one arrest in this case. Have you heard anything new? Are you concerned about the police investigation in, into this murder? I have not heard anything new. I have every confidence that our police department is doing everything it can to get to the bottom of this. I think it's part of the reason why we added dollars to our police and state's attorneys. These are very difficult cases to crack, obviously. So um, I don't think it is a reflection on the competency of our police department. I think it is a reflection of just the complexity of these kinds of cases. And everybody wants this case solved. I have a question. Did the Public Safety Committee get a briefing from police? In this case, this young man who was in court the other day was in a car with two other people wanted on first-degree murder warrants in Annapolis, I believe, in Anne Arundel County. That was September 29th. The police did question him at that time, and then he disappeared. Do you have concerns, again, about their ability to track folks in cases like this? Well, we know that this is a multi-state dynamic, and we've known that for some period of time. And so it is part of the, quote, complexity 
of these kinds of cases. That it's not like all these kids are just living here in Montgomery County and we can just go and find them and blah, blah, blah. Typically, that is not the case. We have not been debriefed in closed session with respect to this matter, and that's, in my judgment, where it would need to be. Um, on a related, possibly related matter, the dead body that was found in Brookville, has there been any discussion with the council as far as who that body is, whether it's related to gang violence, whether it's related to anything? There has not <clears throat> been any communication with the council with respect to that. Do you think the council police worried at all about this just overall gang violence? In the county at this point are you at all worried as the council at all worried at the amount of the gruesomeness of all of it well i think all of my colleagues share my view that we need to be doing everything within our power to make sure that this doesn't happen again and again and again so that's why we gave the police and the state's attorneys everything they asked for that's why we held the joint committee session today that's why the director of HHS was apologetic for being slow and moving forward with a particular program. Our council is all over this, okay? And so, yes, we care deeply. It is totally unacceptable, and we will do whatever it takes. But we knew, do need to hear from the executive branch on what they think it takes, as opposed to us using our own judgment as to what it takes. That's we look to the executive branch to come over and say, we need more. And I've said, if they come over and ask for more, we'll give them more. Do you think it was acceptable for police to release details about this murder two and a half months after the body was found, given that they probably had an understanding of what happened and we didn't get those details till an arrest was made? Do you think that the public would have been served knowing that this very violent murder had happened in one of the county's parks? I think that that's a question you need to pose to our police chief as to the reason for the timing with respect to that. I assume that the reason was that until there was, in fact, an arrest, that they did not want to release details that would in any way compromise their ability to move forward with the investigation in a successful way. So I, I have great confidence that our police department is doing everything it knows how to do to address this and has the public interest uppermost in mind. I have a question to go back to Metro for a bit. Um, so you said that it's absolutely necessary to um, uh, contribute money, and I'm not disagreeing with that, but um, what do you say to the public who is experiencing the train rides of, oh no, single tracking, oh my train's not working, I have to get off, all these other things, like public trust is has been uh, being lost among riders and it's their tax dollars that we go and it. Yeah, so I think it's very comparable to the question that was posed earlier, which basically what I would say to you is that this is a system that has been underinvested in, and we are seeing the results of that. So unless you want to have Groundhog Day, it's a, every day we wake up to this happening again and again, you have to invest more money to change the dynamic. It is a system that is falling apart. It needs to be repaired. That takes dollars. We wish it took less, but it is no longer a system that's new. It's a 40-year-old system. So the LaHood report, for example, part of what I found disappointing about um, Secretary Ron's response to the funding needs is that he pointed to the fact that a uh, a new board would not have any ability to look at union contracts. Well, one of the benefits of the Little Hood report was that it found that our, our, our union contracts are comparable to every other system in America. We're not out of whack here. This is a non-issue. So these are excuses, nothing more. That'd be more of the operating budget as opposed to the cap. We're talking about the capital budget like why there are a lot of skeptics who say throwing more money we did this 10 years ago this did nothing we don't even know where this money went like why is it more necessary now like why are people suddenly on board with it well i think the vast majority of the 
political community in the region has become convinced that in the absence of an infusion of more dollars, the trend line is just going to continue downward, and we cannot have that happen. It's too important to our economy and to our quality of life. Can I jump back to the gangs thing for, for just a second? This latest, again, the killing took place sometime between uh, December and March of last year. Um, that body was found in a, it's a Maryland National Capital Park, Wheaton Regional. Um, what do you say to folks who may be concerned about safety in the parks? There are several times when victims have been lured to these locations and murdered or injured. Um, again, do you, do you have concerns there, and do you have to work with Maryland National Capital Park Police? What? Well, actually, it is one of the reasons. There was a proposal once upon a time to, to merge our, cap, our park police with our police department, and I was among those that led the fight against that because we do want to create an environment in which people feel safe in our parks. So can things still go south? Can ugly things happen? Can horrific things happen? Absolutely. And it's our job to do everything we can to make sure our public not only feels safe, but is safe. And that's our charge to our police department. That's our charge to our every aspect of our public safety community. <coughs> and if they need more resources to do that, they need to let us know. On completely off topic, on tax reform. Um, on tax reform. <laughs> I just wonder if you had any comment because we're on the brink of Senate voting. The CBO came out and said, you know, it'll cost trillions of dollars um, over the next 10 years. Um, attached to that uh, tax reform is health care, which a lot of Montgomery County people use, and there's uh, stuff that affects people's houses and their tax party. I was just wondering if you had any thoughts, since a vote could take place anytime soon. I think it is clear that this is not a tax bill that is good for Montgomery County or good for the state of Maryland. Um, I personally believe it is not good for our country, but speaking as a county official, um, it is bad for Montgomery County. Uh, it will hurt us. Um, so my hope is that a couple of good Republicans will step forward and say no, and that this too will not happen. But it will require a couple others to step up. But on every level, we had a briefing, as you, you may recall, just a few minutes ago on the impact on, of tax reform on health care in Maryland. And really, we need to protect what we have. Uh, also on an unrelated note, do you know when the council is going to elect its next officers, Pre president or vice president? Well, I believe that is scheduled for next week. Next week. Do you expect uh, council vice president Raymer to take over the council president? I wouldn't say otherwise with him sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Doug. You also got a. Uh, briefing this morning on how the changes to the ACA is going to affect the county. I was wondering if you could summarize what you heard and how will it affect it? Well, again, we're dealing with threats to the ACA, but obviously threats to Medicaid funding, threats to the individual mandate will have an impact on our communities. So none of these are positive developments, and we simply don't know at this moment in time which is real. But there are efforts underway to, at the state level, try and have individual mandates required. To do that at the state level if the federal government backs off that requirement. And that individual mandate is important because what it does is it has healthier, younger people in the system, which offsets the cost of serving older more costly. Mm -hmm. And if all of those people aren't in, then the premiums for the people that are in go up significantly. So that's, the, if you will, the magic of the individual mandate. It's, it's intended to ensure that everyone 
has insurance, mm -hmm. which in effect subsidizes those who need it the most and who use it the most. Is the county prepared to do its own individual mandate or are you going to wait to see I don't that? believe we would have that authority or the means by which we can implement it, but the state system, it does lend itself to that. But what I, I posed that question today and uh, the answer from our director was that that is, would be an important step, but without the federal subsidy, this whole thing falls apart. So we do need federal dollars to make this system work, and that's what's fundamentally at risk as well, particularly in the tax reform. Another question about Metro. Have you seen the whole code reform? Yes. The whole thing? Yes. Do you have any overarching concerns that you want to mention? No, I, I thought that uh, they did a good job. I thought it was a positive uh, report. I thought it identified the issues that needed to be identified. I thought, it, I thought he did a good job. Any issues that should have addressed with you? No, I mean, they, he, he shied away from coming up with how the individual jurisdictions should fund their share, which I thought was appropriate. I don't think that that was something that he should get involved in. But in terms of assessing the system, assessing the needs of the system, I thought he did a very a good job. Is Metro going to get any better now that all of these reports, investigations have been done? We've had the uh, Federal Department, of, Federal Transit Administration, now the La Hood report, a whole bunch of other reports. You said that um, uh, COG was reviewing things. Like, when is Metro going to be accountable and trusted by them? Well, I think it's accountable now, um, and I would say that we should hold them accountable when we give them the resources they need in order to achieve a state of good repair. Where's the money going to come from? For the, the trust fund, the Maryland Trust Fund. Okay. We have a transportation trust fund. Wow. That's what it should be used for. for my minutes, but it's, you know, is Hogan in agreement with that idea? He has said for the next four years, he will spend $125 million a year, presumably from the trust fund for that purpose. And all I'm saying is if you can do it for four, why not just do it for six more and be done with this? Anything else, gang? Any exciting stories from Thanksgiving you wanted to share with us? No. <laughs> Lemon meringue pie. Is this week yeah. your last press briefing with us? It is, and it's going to be a doozy. <laughs> <laughs>